Hey guys, today we want to talk about nature versus nurture. This is a concept that basically argues um, which one is stronger. Is it how we are brought up or how we are born? So nurtures how we are brought up, how we are affected by our parents, the people who raise us, people we are around, and one could argue the environment and then nature is what we are born with, our genetics, what we already have as soon as we enter this world. Now a lot of people have been first off confusing the term nurture. Some people ascribe it to just the bringing up of an individual. Maybe it's your parents or whoever raised you or your mentors. But I think a much fuller definition that uh, will fully develop my argument in this video is everything environmental that affects you. From your co-workers, your classmates, your peers, to your parents, the people who raise you, your environment, random events throughout your life, maybe stuff as simple as you tripping and missing your bus which spurred you to go a different route to your destination that made you bump into one person who introduced you to another person who you became decent friends with and he instilled in you a deep interest for art and painting that you would never have ever discovered or learned to love unless you had in that specific way been introduced to painting in that specific way. Now that sort of stuff happens. So ultimately I'm saying the environment is very important and that's what I'm ascribing to nurture. And nurture I think um, ascribing it this way is very important also because a lot of people, uh, psychologists, and in experiments, they're saying in studies that, hey, you can argue that your peers have just as much of an influence, if not a much higher influence, than your parents that you grow up with. Now, what I found um, through just reading um, books and studies on this, uh, a great one is uh, a book called Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goldman. Um, it goes on and on about how uh, parents are a great influence uh, in so many ways uh, in terms of how you come out, uh, how they teach you everything from what you should value to how you should treat other individuals to uh, how they punish you and reward you based off your behaviors. It will instill a lot of different values in you and uh, how they discipline you based on certain things like if you're crying or um, if, you're, if you do something bad or just are curious about the wrong things. It has such a deep impact and influence on you. But what I want to talk about is success and achieving success and whether it's something you're genetically born with or... Uh, it's based off your environment. Um, now I do think uh, that the brain and the body, especially the brain, is so adaptable and plastic and uh, malleable given the right mindsets and practices that you can adapt to a lot of different situations and excel in different situations based off the ever-changing environment around you. Uh, one of the great things and reasons why our brain is like that. Um, but what I found, what I think is that as far as achieving success, oftentimes it requires a deep interest in the topic before proceeding. And that deep interest in the po topic to eventually become an expert and excel at it often requires some sort of spurring moment, maybe it's not a moment but a long period of time where you're introduced to the topic and you learn and eventually fall in love with it and 
something like this, I feel like is for sure an environmental thing that oftentimes is just luck. Now, this is, doesn't always have to be the case, but what you learn to enjoy, I find is very much oftentimes a matter of luck in, due to your environment, not completely. And I'll, gi I'll give you an example. Um, I've, I've noticed uh, quite a few twins out there and their interests just vary dramatically. Now these are people who are genetically born the exact same. Um, and again, saying this, there's also twins out there who are very, very similar in terms of their interests. I'll give you an example on YouTube. The Hodge twins, they're very deep into strength camp lifting and strength training. And because of that, they've created this enormous YouTube following with hundreds of thousands of subscribers on uh, lifting weights. And I feel like oftentimes that comes from the twins hanging out with each other for most of their life. On the flip side though, you'll see twins uh, who maybe they didn't spend their lives together or they behave like brothers where they would have to interact with each other but otherwise they'd just be on their own. And what I found is that these people oftentimes develop different interests. So much in fact that you'll find twins that um, some, one of them is a very exceptional athlete, Olympic level or national level, whereas the other one is not into it at all, just as an example. And it could be other things like painting, artistry, music, and so forth. And uh, this sort of stuff happens because of the complexity of life. Every single moment you live is something that, that can diverge um, a pathway. And so uh, stuff like I mentioned before where um, you, you fall into an interest based off different experiences in your lifetime that your twin did not can lead you down in very deep different path. Now I don't have a twin but throughout my own life I, I definitely observed this sort of stuff because there's certain hobbies that I probably would not have if they were not introduced to me in a very specific way. My whole interest in uh, success, personal finance, business, economics, all that sort of stuff was spurred from a moment where I was playing a video game and listening to videos uh, about dating on YouTube while I was playing the game and through related videos I stumbled across a book that just happened to relate and pull my interest and then over time that snowballed into what I did now. Uh, very much so because of specific lectures by people like Warren Buffett uh, where he really just explained it and showed business in a way that was just amazing to you. Um, and so it's, it's very interesting because I know for sure that uh, if I was introduced to this just out of the blue, I wouldn't have any interest uh, in some other way. If this had just been some random person who ran up to me and be and went like, "Hey, would you like to buy these books on personal finance, or would you like to buy these books on on this or that?" I'm sure there's no way I would have had any interest in it. Um, it's oftentimes the way you're introduced to things that create that interest, and it makes you think how many hidden interests are out there that you do not know of because you were not introduced to them in the right way. Um, and I do think that a lot of things in life can be like this. Uh, your interest in whether it's video games or sports or uh, going to things are oftentimes dictated by the group of people that you happen to fall into uh, and the sequence of events before that that either put you off or put you on to a topic if you had a bad experience with something um, 
if you fell from a very popular clique in high school to a very uh, loner clique and from either bad experiences or good experiences you were introduced to different things you may have a deep interest in football or basketball whereas everyone else not you know if, if you had your alternate ego or your alternate persona in an alternate universe would not because they had a harsh social click and then they got spurred into a different thing and I do have to say as a disclaimer to all of this there is certain aspects of genetics and nature that also have an effect on this you definitely are born with certain inclinations to do certain things and not other things all over so I do think you know finding a percentage is wrong because it's it's just it, you it cannot it's not like this thing where it's like it has to be 80% of that and 20% of this it's more just like a merging of both topics because um, genetics for instance you can have things like um, a natural deep inclination to just be shy towards people you don't know uh, or uh, a genetic predisposition predisposition to something so bad that you are literally uh, maybe even medically uh, different uh, such as ADHD and those things can affect your environment and your interests as well um, and what sort of stuff you can focus on uh, so I think the whole topic is very interesting and long story short I think both nature and nurture are very very important and it really I think really makes you think because that also means that um, there's an um, infinite number of potential things that could have been different in your life I know for sure in mine that will spurred me to a very different place than I'm at right now um, maybe a different set of interests completely um, or a different set of beliefs and experiences which can dramatically affect your personality uh, I know for sure that a lot of these books that I've been reading have definitely dramatically affected my knowledge which has in turn affected how I choose to think, present myself and so forth um, but I do think also uh, there's this um, video I did on a YouTuber who literally found out that she had a twin that she did not know before. She was adopted and she had a twin who was adopted in a completely different country and they found out about each other through the internet because one twin saw the other on the internet and realized this person looks a lot like me. I did a whole video on the topic it's called um, separated at birth real life parent trap and basically uh, I'm bringing this up because you see here they, they, they live fairly different lives with different cultures one in I think France the other in the United States and yet, although there's differences, there's a surprising amount of similarities in just their general personality, how they interacted, certain little things that they did, which is very eerie in a way. So one could argue, sure, you can have a dramatic impact, but certain core things can stay the same. And... I think it gets more complicated in the fact that certain pathways in life out of the infinite amount billions of pathways out there that you could potentially travel you can have events that dramatically change you whether it's reading the right book or falling into the right line of what you're doing uh, and those can have tremendous impacts on who you become, what you become, where you go. And that's very, very scary. I mean, um, one can argue that a lot of very successful, incredible people like Oprah Winfrey 
or Bill Gates, had they not fallen into certain aspects, which were partially due to luck, they would not be the personality that they are, nor would they be the person that they are. I think, I mean, Oprah and uh, Bill are decent examples because Bill grew up in one of the only high schools in the nation to have a computer that they could access unsupervised um, versus Oprah who followed her passion of interviewing and uh, happened to do certain actions that I, I wouldn't argue is really luck. It's just, it's partially luck in taking that chance, but uh, I don't think it's luck um, that she chose to do a huge risk and pack up and move. Um, so I wouldn't say that's the best example. I guess a good one is Ellen DeGeneres. Um, and that, although she she would have done very well, she would have had a great life, um, had she been born a different time or not been introduced to a certain thing, she wouldn't be where she is. Um, and I guess you could argue the same thing with Oprah Winfrey being an African-American woman. Um, both of those people, Ellen DeGeneres and Oprah Winfrey, had they been born maybe 10 years earlier, or 50 years earlier, they would have had decent lives, maybe, but honestly, like, they wouldn't have become who they are today. Uh, Oprah being the billionaire she is, having such a wide influence, bringing all this skill set with her interviews and so forth, and Ellen doing what she does as a homosexual individual, it's really mind-boggling. Really, it is. Uh, so that's all we want to say in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.